Yes, Father Conrad. Hmm, where was I? Uh, you spoke about Protestants. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So hmm. one of the things that now it comes to my mind that uh, when Christ said, "This is my body," it took bread. It also says, scripture says, it took bread and it said, this is my body. And it took the uh, wine and he said, this is the cup of my blood. No. Right. So uh, at least we respect, we respect Christ and we honor Christ and we know that he was not a liar. No. And then John 6 uh, confirms that beautifully. Now Jesus could have told that there uh, were disciples who are leaving. You two want to go, go. No, or he could have told them, don't, 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 please don't go. I am only meant in the symbolic sense. No. So that John 6 communicates that beautifully. That Jesus was not communicating it from the symbolic sense, but he was communicating it from uh, that he really meant what he meant to say. No. So, and in the end, he proved it also by offering his body and blood on the cross. So Protestants have a different take on John 6, like, uh, though even it explicitly says that, you know, it's the real body and blood of Christ, but still they have a different uh, like view on that. It, I, they may have not understood it. Okay. So. Next. Okay, so next question. Uh, one second, yes. Yeah, so uh, my third question would be, uh, so how do you refute modernist priests who say that communion in the hand is a very old uh, practice, you know, it was used in the early church and uh, people, uh, they believe that and, uh, and they usually quote uh, this uh, Saint uh, Cyril of Jerusalem. And uh, the quote is there on the chat box, if you all can see. Uh, when thou goest to receive communion, go with, go not with thy wrist extended. One second, I'll just... Yeah. So go not, not with thy wrist extended, but thy finger separated, but placing thy left hand as a throne for thy right, which to receive a great king, and in the hallow, in the hollow of the palm, receive the body of Christ saying Amen, which is what we do in our uh, Novus Ordo Mass. So, I mean, how do you refute, uh, I mean, how do you tackle this? There are priests uh, who have told me this, you know, quoting this and and giving me the reference. Father Condor, can you, can you elaborate? Any of the this? priests can take this, Father <clears throat> I have already answered this question in a way. <laughs> so, I have already answered this question in a way. What? Uh, let Father, Father, wait, wait, wait. I want your, want your reaction now. I already answered. Do you think I have answered it? I don't know it. The question of Orthodox and Lutherans not believing. In, uh... Pardon? No, when I was uh, yes, when I was talking to you all, how theology evolved. Theology right. evolved. Ah, right, right. The understanding about see, we the word mystery, for example. Mystery means invitation to enter into the very mysterium of God. No. So as things progressed, no. Now, what was revealed to St. Thomas Aquinas was not revealed maybe to the apostles. Now, or you have this mystery also in John 6, for example. Now, Jesus uh, says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Now, the disciples, how did they understand this mystery? They understood it in the real sense, eating the sun. This is cannibalism, they said. No. So, then uh, many of them leave him. Many of them leave him. Next. There are some, who are, some disciples who are still there waiting. 
And Jesus says, you too want to go? And then you have the famous words of Peter, which talks, which actually in a way reveals the mystery. So this is one indication in the gospel where you now mystery would be revealed later. You now, Lord, to whom shall we go? You no. Know? In other words, it seemed to communicate to me, Lord, I may not understand at present what you are trying to say. I may not fully comprehend what you are trying to say. No. But to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. I may have not understood, but I know for sure that you have done it. Now, that is faith. In faith, we believe, we believe certain mysteries of God. No. So, for example, if I am saying the rosary, meditating on the mystery daily, I may say, oh, I have been doing it daily. Now, why today again I must do it? I should be the greatest ever fool. And that is how many of us approach the mysteries. He said, now once I meditated is enough. Mystery is such that God's mystery is ineffable, unending. It's an invitation to daily enter, 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 enter. Sky is the limit. Immeasurable, ineffable mystery. No. So it's an invitation to enter into that mystery. So if you say, oh, full stop, my learning is over. You are acting foolish and stupid because learning can never be over. For all eternity, we will be learning also. Your God is such a vast mystery of knowledge and wisdom. No. So this is one example. Then you have an example where Jesus, uh, for example, in uh, John 13, when the washing of the feet. What does Jesus tell Peter explicitly, finally? You may not understand it now. But you, but will, understand you will understand it, it later. 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 Yeah. Correct. So, yes, yes, which yes. means your understanding about things may not. And then in the Gospels also, you have cases of these. Now, initially they looked at him. One said, you are a teacher. Other said, you are a Lord. Other said, you are a great master. No. And things like that. So with the apostles also developed. No. And we see that the understanding of things developed over a period of time. No. So the understanding of the mystery of Christ. No. And that is what it means when Jesus says, I will lead, give you my spirit to lead you into all truth. Christ is the ultimate truth. But in him, we are led into further truths thanks to the Holy Spirit. No. So entering into the mystery. So in this light, if you understand and grasp this thing, then you need to understand St. Cyril or any of the old saints' quotation from that light, that theology evolved and became more and more profound. And now, if they say Vatican II is evolved theology, garbage. Sorry, I'm using a strong word. It is not evolved theology. From post-Vatican, we are going back to ABCDs. We are going back to the this thing. What was evolved is trend. Now, the height when it comes to the Eucharistic mystery. But we are saying, okay, we need to go, go back, go back, go back. You are going back into what is known as you are uh, disintegrating. You are getting relegated into the past. No. So relegating into the past is not a very ideal situation. Right? Yes, sir. Going back into the past is not ideal. Evolve. And now when this theology evolved, one of the things you need to know is one of the things that evolved was also the whole attitude towards the bread and wine. Let's put it in rational term, bread and wine. The whole attitude changed because now they realize it is body and blood, soul and divinity 
Oh my! I would rather crawl on my knees to receive him rather than, oh, he is the Lord and Savior. He is there, fully there, present. The mystery of God in the Eucharist. No. So I would rather receive reverence and awe. So, so sometimes what happens, I, I see sometimes in the traditional uh, situation, sometimes things have not been understood in this light. No, that that the traditional mass. One of the key element in that is in there is this: the reverence and awe. Reverence and awe is a doctrine. Is a doctrine which is gone missing in the church in post-Vatican period. Yeah. And so I. Put it very strongly to my people who have listened to me. I put it very strongly. Psalmist says this. The psalmist says this. Those who revere you, Lord, you establish your friendship with them forever. And in the light of what the psalmist says, if reverence and raw has, raw has gone missing, then where is God's friendship with the people? Tell me. If you do not know how to revere and look at the Savior in awe, especially in this mystery of the Eucharist, can God be establishing his friendship with you? Can you be friends with God? Tell me. Can any of these modern Catholics who have no reverence, no awe, can they be friends with God? No. no Father. Enemies of God. The psalmist says this. The Lord looks down on those who revere him. Can the Lord be looking down on these who have no reverence, no awe for God? Can he look at them with respect? Can he really look down on them and hear their cry and plea? And there are who are sending videos and things like that. Corona will go before the sacrament. Corona will go. Corona will go. Will it go? When you have no respect and hope for the Eucharist? Crap building false hopes in people. Right. False hope. No. Such is the crap that goes around on media, internet and things like that. On WhatsApp and things like that. When there is no repentance, no reverence, no awe, no respect for God, can you expect God to work miracles, wonders in our lives? So, so it is it is it is a point of no return that we have entered into. No. Yes. It's it is it is it is at the highest level now. Reverence for it is gone now to not only to heresy, but it is gone to apostasy also. But that's a fact. Right. So where have we reached? We have reached that level. So I hope I've answered your question. Yes, yes, Father. Yeah, very true. Explained very well. I hope so. Everyone has understood. It was very lucid and very simple. Father Thank, thank, uh, thank you. Thanks Father. a lot. Thank you, Father. Father thank you, Father. Would you like to add anything? <coughs> uh, Father Frank. Uh, firstly, yeah, uh, sorry. Sorry, I was forgetting that I put off the video. Yeah. Yeah, so firstly, uh, uh, Continuing with uh, Father Conrad's uh, point of uh, which he has placed before, which is very, very important, is the whole thing of going back to the beginning or going back to an earlier understanding, okay. even after God, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and through brilliant saints and mystics and doctors and teachers in the church, gave us further understanding and you know brought certain things into the praxis of the church 
the orthodox practices of the Catholic faith and church. Then going back to a, uh, you know, uh, to a practice and an understanding before that, it just doesn't make sense, no. And uh, just to uh, emphasize and, and sort of restate what Father, Father Conrad was saying, uh, that is one of the, uh, you know, you know, one of the what you say, the weaknesses and the contradictions of uh, a lot of uh, Vatican II uh, theology and understanding, no. On the one on the one hand, we are told that this is a council that is that was that that aims to update the church, bring the church, uh, bring the church's practices, you know, take the church's practices further, bring it bring it in line with modern man. That is, of course, a complete uh, complete madness. But at the same time. You come up with things like this. You say, oh, just because very early in the church, communion in the hand was being practiced, we have to now make communion in the hand a norm. Right. And the whole uh, madness in this whole thing is, even now, canonically, officially, communion in the hand is not the norm. When uh, Pope Paul VI allowed it, only after so much of pressure and clamor from the whole world, uh, we all are aware no, that the whole thing of communion in the hand began uh, more in a very rebellious uh, of the world, like Holland, Germany, and so on. Right. No? They were in, they wanted, they were, they were tired, they, they were tired and fed up of, uh, you know, all the restrictions and the great reverence being offered and wanted more and more simplified uh, norms, communion in the hand. And then Pope Paul VI, unfortunately, uh, gave in. Right. Uh, to the demands of the bishops, but there also in his uh, in his document, uh, I think it's uh, Memoriale Domini, right? So he he mentions clearly that it is meant to be an exception, not a norm, and that to clearly it specifies, and that stands to this day when the ordinary right. minister of the Eucharist and the dispensation, rather the uh, distribution of the Holy Eucharist is not present, the priest or the deacon, then only you can have, uh, you know, certain things. Okay. Uh, and commune in the hand as an exception, as an exception. But slowly, as it is with all other errors and heresies, once you open the door for one section, one area of the world, uh, it is that slippery slope argument. No, once you set the ball rolling, you cannot stop it from rolling right through uh, from the yes. top to the Right so, right, so so that is the thing, no? Uh, so uh, you know, so quite a lot, quite some time back, I had come across somewhere wherein there was this term being denoted for this practice, for this heresy of going back to the past, and uh, it, it was mentioned as antiquarianism. So what I want to do is actually want to just investigate this further, uh, antiquarianism. Okay. Uh, so, so, so this thing of just going to past practices, wherever it suits you, wherever it doesn't suit you, you become modern. Wherever it suits you, you go to the past. Okay, which is which is uh, which is again contradiction of the highest order. Uh, after that, uh, uh, just come up uh, have have just come across this post on uh, Dr. Taylor Marshall's site. Uh, he's addressed specifically this uh, point, okay? Uh, the heading of the, the article is, did the church fathers practice communion in the hand? What about St. Cyril of Jerusalem? Question mark. And the heading says, did the church fathers practice communion in the hand? Not exactly, in brackets. And he goes on to explain, and he's saying, uh, communion in the hand was not the norm even in the early church. St. Leo the Great and St. Gregory the Great uh, are early witnesses to communion on the tongue being normative. St. Basil admits that communion on the hand did happen, but this was only, he explicitly explains that this was only under certain circumstances. What were the circumstances? These are the words of St. Basil. He says, if one feels that he should in times of persecution in the absence of a priest or deacon receive communion by his own hand, 
there should be no need to point out that this certainly shows no grave immoderation for long custom allows this in such cases he uses the word in such case that is qualifying uh, in fact this applied to the solitaries the uh, who, who were in the desert no the desert fathers and the desert uh, monks no where there was no priest so they would reserve the blessed sacrament in their dwellings and then they would uh, receive it uh, with their own hands no so so, so so it was a it was an exception okay it was not the norm uh, just looking at what he says about saint cyril so so what must have been the case is also again it's an example of your your reading uh, things out of context even when saint cyril is saying it uh, now i am i am i am not aware of from which document from which of his writings it been taken and we have and i am not seen the whole writing but it could very well be that he is saying it in a particular context as an exception but we are yeah. reading as a norm we are reading it as a norm so which is completely it, 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 then and the same thing then that we say don't read the bible out of context no again you will be told uh, uh, by the same council don't read the bible out of context don't read just one passage and take some meaning but then here you are doing exactly the opposite no so so that's the thing yeah, yeah. uh saint basil have shared the screen here Uh, saint basil says that communion in the hand is only allowed under two conditions first is under times of persecution where where there is no priest present and second for hermits and as ascetics in the wilderness who are, who do not have priests so if exactly you, if you Same are thing, uh, yeah. taylor marshall's uh, have shared the screen here if you all can see did the early yes, church yes. practice communion in the hand not exactly thanks this what i would like to say is uh, all the modernist priests are trying to confuse uh, the lay people and the laity about communion in the hand they are basically focusing on the principles of calvinism mm, right what do you say father franky <clears throat> uh can you come again and explain that uh, this uh, oban your this now th there was a priest over here in orlem and in fact even he was in uh, justin's parish and he said that uh, i'll take his name his father harry was and he says that he had even told uh, justin that uh, you know the great saint saint basil also gave communion in the hand so i would say he was trying to confuse the matter by saying that you know he is trying to mix mox it with calvinism or maybe so the calvinism practice or maybe there there might be persecution or in, in which they might have received you can say that also yeah no but but not under so normal conditions so oban yeah oban when 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 uh, when I, anyone i don't other have you for that matter anyone is quoting saint basil but then he is only mentioning only part of the truth no is it is mentioning it only as a half exactly exactly mentioning. but he should not he should he should not be lying he should be he should be you know on the altar mm -hmm. when anyone queries him he should not as a priest he should not misguide no so saying this is because stop because when I, i questioned him on that and i told him don't focus and don't confuse the matter on calvinism he had no answer <laughs> yeah so uh, so so basically uh, the practice of communion in the hand is basically finally now has led as as pope uh, benedict said you know, it's taken away the sense of reverence and awe and the sense of mystery from the eucharist and what is that reducing us to it's reducing us to uh, basically uh, more of the protestant uh, uh, level of uh, this you no know? whatever in terms of whether it is in terms of uh, belief or in terms of our reverence and adoration and love very true very true right very true. 
and i think uh, father conrad will, i mean will this uh, will sort of echo the same sentiments uh, dear friends oban and uh, justin and oswald and bernard uh, we as priests actually get to see it first hand and it is really heartbreaking uh, actually when you stand to distribute holy communion no, today, but no, no but what what i'm saying is like he as a senior priest is supposed to be holding a doctorate he should not be confusing the faith faithful over there correct spreading confusion yeah that is he's holding is, a doctorate is old i think he's holding now a doctorate they are saying because of covid now they are saying because of covid so there's a different bahana right no but listen uh, in uh, st lawrence father clarence gives on the tongue hmm. i mean it's 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 a real blessing to have such priests you know who uh let let everything go uh, like there was there was a time when they said no no come in in the hand because of aids yeah because somebody else uh, spit on the finger uh, uh, somebody might get you know aids at that time so there are the priests who have told me that it started because of this also but i have failed to swine yeah. swine flu in pune yeah various things i know but but the thing is i failed to understand that these people are so Uh, shaking in their faith you know that if they are receiving the body of christ then do they fear why do they have to fear of illness and sickness and any such thing correct that depends again your own belief your own reverence like whatever father conrad said you know if you are a truly a friend of christ and you truly believe then why do we have to fear covid or swine flu or anything when you have the reverence and you believe that's it you know that's I that's think, what i'm I sorry to say cardinal cardinal ozel gracious has passed a uh, order that to give communion in only on the hand not on the tongue yes i i know that these orders are being passed but what i'm uh, not as a tradition is but but uh, even believing the tradition and even uh, you know keeping the faith you know i strongly believe that the communion should be touched only by consecrated hands of a priest not That's even right. the eucharistic minister not even the mm-hmm. eucharistic minister and especially not the ladies you know uh, our lord uh, you cannot imagine and you know these ladies uh, whatever uh, you, you cannot imagine a lady uh, handling the body of christ it has to be a priest there are no women priests it has to be the consecrated hands of a priest and i don't believe and, and i don't know why you know and sometimes i see these eucharistic ministers uh, when i was in bombay also i have seen these eucharistic ministers ladies they don't even have a veil on their uh, you know uh, head covered on the head so mm. there is no reverence and they are wearing pants and tights and what not and then the, i see them coming in sitting in the first rows and waving out to people and doing all this i mean if you are a eucharistic minister i don't believe in that now but i'm saying if you are a eucharistic minister at least have a disposition of being uh, worthy of the post you have they don't have any such thing it's just that they come they want a position in that uh, church just to show off probably i don't know for what i don't know why no bernard bernard yeah. it's a matter of basically it's a it's a matter of pride normally when they are come when they come in especially for years in orle maladio it's a matter yeah. of pride you know when they have the parish, parish council meeting and when they call these eucharistic ministers and go and administer eucharist or the holy communion to the sick so it's a matter of pride oh i am taking i am taking christ to a sick person and when you tell them like oh why are you coming no no you should receive it with your heart i'm coming with christ to you so you should receive it so it's a matter of pride and the parish priests and all of them they chada them but they don't know it's a big i put it as profanation of pastoral duties am i right exactly. father franky but uh, obain if if a uh, if a eucharistic yes. minister one minute, one, minute. Holy... one minute brother no, franky no, let us right? no, let us finish let us finish <clears throat> let Yeah okay go ahead. Yeah Ozi. Okay, what I'm saying if the eucharistic minister goes with the holy communion into a sick patient will they be able to do the confession it's not possible no? so it is better for a priest to go no? exactly 
right exactly. and i have come across sorry to say i have come across many eucharistic uh, ministers whose families have been destroyed very badly but still they don't realize that this is a call from god not to touch the species that's what i'm saying it's a matter of pride for them they don't they don't they're blinded so much that they feel oh i am taking i am taking communion so the parish priest has told me he has given me this duty but in such cases as you mentioned like you know uh, giving to the sick they say ki you can just make a perfect act of contrition that's it you don't have to go for but what about the sick if they want to make a confession that is important no without a confession and forgiveness how will the healing take place also <clears throat> that is what this especially, especially if, the, if the person is aware that he is under mortal sin or in mortal sin a simple act of contrition i don't know i mean it's really will not do will not do no, will I not don't do. so that's a very valid point actually. yeah yeah so uh, no clearly what uh, what are you saying that is uh, that is a, in any case situation where it's a sick person uh, that uh, one thing is there dear friends uh, when it is a sick call now so especially if the anointing if, if the person is serious or one is in the danger of death uh, then it's very understood that the priest has to go okay and, and that is done in, in most places Uh, if it's a seriously sick person or, or, and clear, or, or a person clearly in the danger of death, uh, it is the priest who will go because you will have to give him the anointing of the sick. He may ask for confession. In fact, it is the duty of the priest to ask him whether he would like to make his confession. Yeah. Uh, and if he is in the danger of death, absolutely uh, to give him even viaticum, no, for the, uh, the as holy communion as viaticum. Yeah. So that is there. Uh, but the problem uh, remains with uh, extraordinary ministers of the eucharist becoming the norm and uh, taking communion to the senior citizens of the home bound on a regular basis and uh, uh, now it has become the norm so now what happens is say even a priest who wants to uh, go to a particular say he may not take up the whole parish but he may take up a few communities okay few sectors uh to this, to this it becomes a little of a difficulty because uh, there is now the policy that uh, the eucharistic ministers uh, go to all the areas uh, the priest don't go to the home bound only the eucharistic ministers go okay. so, so this thing is also there now, now it's it's become like a reverse now it's it's become like a reverse uh, reverse flow you know reverse voltage so, so even if a priest wants to do it uh he, he'll have to face a this as to why you want to uh, take up so much of the this year extra ordinary ministers are there why are you not uh, willing to sort of no that is also there okay okay one point i want to mention is i want to share with you all some years back in 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 my parish here in norlem father franky and father conrad please uh, please you can listen to this and you can i can give me your views on it uh you know father father larry was the parish priest and there was one of my friends mother who was very sick in uh, in the residential area close by over here and he called me and uh, basically his mother was almost dead so i just told him i said please call her priest fast she's almost going she's sinking or you tell me whether you should we should shift her to the hospital i said no call her priest immediately and at least get her entered and give her extra munction or whatever and that, that's it so you know you won't, you know won't believe it that the parish priest father larry sent a married deacon and he came bruno nathan i don't know whether you know father conrad will know bruno nathan he was from borovli okay a married deacon <laughs> came to give extra, extra munction and holy communion and uh, these people are mangalorians and suddenly they're saying padre ho ya padre ho asa and then uh, they just seen him and i when i seen that guy he came in a rickshaw with his casso with his albanol and i felt like laughing okay i felt like laughing because then suddenly this guy is a notorious this this friend of mine is a notorious character he's like a gunda catholic gunda with all underworld connection and all that so yeah, he's he so he seen this uh, <laughs> and he says he lost it he lost it he says you and all the fs and the bs and came out he went to we literally went to control him at that that married deacon would have got pasting he says better go to the church tell your parish priest to send any assistant fast 
otherwise i'll come and i'll, I'll murder you he told him he told that that fellow ran away and then father daniel came father daniel came i said i asked father daniel what is this uh, it is supposed to be 9:30 no i am having dinner i said dinner comes first or a sick call comes first i said and the amount so i want to know i want to know why do they do this for a sick call in the arch diocese of bombay <clears throat> are they tired I, of their ministry very sad it is oh, hmm? i'm telling you the, 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 the i have to literally control my friend he would have broken that married deacon's head i'm telling you he's a ruffian yeah and they are call, you actually, know they are uh, basically uh, oh when i came across yeah, go a priest in goa the uh, the person wanted a last thing and uh, he refused and same priest died after 5 months with covid jason was from kandalim church right now we had even father melroy who Why was they are refusing he, to go on sick call he I went and he's gone for a sick call hats off to father melroy who's gone for a sick call who was who had joined us in our zoom catechism you know yes i mean i, I, I don't know why they send all these married deacons and all these things outsourcing no, of but, pastoral uh, but duties but oban yeah but oban <laughs> i don't think it's happening everywhere it uh, priests do go for sick calls don't think it is happening everywhere but uh, it, it, it uh, uh, father franky yeah. it's yeah. happening in one of the biggest parishes in in in, in the diocese yeah. our parish is like an experimental parish that is you, you know unfortunately what is what i come to see in bombay is one is bombay itself and what, uh, what i see in the whole world also is i think all the mega cities no where we consider ourselves mm. to be too uh, broad minded and modern and so on it is there only that the church is most sort of uh, into all sorts of uh, madness no but now what other... happens if this if this married deacon would have gone and on say rap, in the same bombay been... and in oban oban then in bombay no in bombay i mm. think it is more all our mega parishes no these very very big parishes say orlem it can be uh, ic where all the uh, where all the elite sort of are there no there there is more of this clamor even washi is one more case here also we have we have two categories one is the is like the modern they want the modern church and then there are the simple uh, people also who very much want party and reverence and traditional uh, reverence and so on yeah? but the more, but what happens you know what is the story everywhere no the the the, the sort of the so, sort of the educated and the and the rich tend to be more vociferous and more correct correct yeah. so when that is the case i feel so very very unfortunate because you cannot in under under any uh, justification whatsoever you can't send a deacon because it is the sacrament of extreme unction it involves uh, confession how can how can the de- how can the deacon handle that sacrament extreme unction cannot be administered by a deacon exactly exactly that is what i told when he, when he went back and he sent father daniel i said what is wrong with you all i said no i was having dinner is this <laughs> anyway go ahead you have to pray uh, everyone okay just to uh, just very quickly uh, that article i think uh, this is a very good article uh, that dr taylor marshall has put up no for all of us i just uh, noticed there is ad- actually address saint cyril's argument what he says is first of all that uh, document from which this quoted uh, catechesis mr gogica uh, that is not, not a very reliable uh, this okay it's a disputed uh, uh, this uh, document and secondly you cannot take just that one quote of saint cyril when there are quotes by so many 